Well, today we're taking a ribeye primal and turning it into individual steaks, showing you how you can save some money. Stick around and we'll get right into it. From my backyard to yours, less hate, more love, good barbecue. Well, I'm Scott from Bartlow's Barbecue. Thanks for watching the channel and subscribing. And if you find value in this video, I really hope that you hit that subscribe button. Today, we've got a Rostelli's six pound ribeye primal. And I wanna talk about how you can save some money, maybe between 50 to $75, depending on where you purchase this compared to buying individual steaks. And uh, I wanna thank Rostelli's and also Meter. I was able to uh, purchase this through gift cards that I had through my partnership with Meter and being one of their ambassadors. And I decided to get a primal um, ribeye because I love ribeye steaks. And I thought, you know what, maybe we could actually save money by buying primal ribeyes this way moving forward. So we're gonna do a video today to show you how many slices can you get from a six pound primal ribeye versus purchasing an individual ribeye steak uh, that is, again, prime cut. Now, if you go in Walmart, and most people that I know, uh, again, you're gonna go to a butcher, you're gonna go online shopping, you're gonna go to you know the premium place to get steaks, but sometimes just the average Joe, the novice might just go to a Walmart. So you go pull up on Walmart, it's uh, this prime ribeye slice steak here is around on average $17 per pound. So they have this priced at $18. So for a nice prime steak, $18, and it might go up to $25 to $30, depending on how thick it is and the ounces and things like that. So you think about six pounds, you get this Rostelli's online uh, for $150, and it might go on sale. You might get it cheaper depending on the season. Uh, and there's other websites out there you could check out and research Primal ribeyes versus individual steaks. And I think we can get, uh, the website says we can get between eight to 12, depending on slices of steaks, depending on how thick we are. So we're gonna aim for around that one inch um, size steaks. So we're gonna take this out of the bag. We're gonna bring you in, start patting this dry, and then start um, uh, cutting these into individualized steaks. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna vacuum seal these so that we can uh, put them in the refrigerator or freezer and save them when we're ready to cook steaks during the week or weekend. And if you noticed earlier, I am wearing my meat sweat steak shirt in honor of this cook. So now we're gonna take this out of the bag, make sure we get all the juices staying in the bag as we pull it out. I'm gonna put it in this Ziploc bag uh, and then we're gonna pat everything dry. So move this over, make sure I don't lose juices on the table and then we'll discard this here in a little bit. So now I'm gonna take a napkin and just kind of pat this dry. And then from here, we will talk about and showcase this primal ribeye. All right, friends, these are fly fans that you see in the background. So apologize if that's distracting, but it is that season. So I have taken this out of the package, patted it dry. I actually put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes uh, to kind of um, get this a little bit colder. Uh, so it'll be easier to cut. And for the most part, I removed silver skin, some unnecessary fat. What I'm finding that uh, this is pretty even, but it definitely kind of kind of get smaller towards the end on this side as far as thickness so i'm gonna my, my plan is to go thicker thicker cuts on this side of the primal and do thinner cuts because i think uh this side will just uh lend itself to thinner uh thinner cut steaks uh on this side uh, but you can uh, take your thumb and that could be about a one inch thick and this will be kind of your guiding principle here. And then we'll just kind of go through. All right, we ended up getting nine good slices and then some beef 
rib tips right here for that last slice as it, it didn't end up uh, slicing to really form a, a solid steak. So we got about an inch thick, some are thinner, some are a little thicker than others. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to vacuum seal this is the way that we're gonna store this. Then I'll freeze it and then I'll be able to take and defrost it when it's time uh, to cook up a steak during the weekend or also on a weeknight. So this is just another alternative to get you thinking about how you can get more involved in your backyard grilling and barbecue experience. And in some cases, you can save some money on prime steaks if you end up buying a primal, find the right price versus individualized steak. So it's a lot of fun. I know I can continue to enhance um, my experience and getting more experience on cutting primals. And, uh, and as I do, we'll showcase what we're learning along the way. But this is something I wanted to go ahead and show you to help you start researching and think about how you can also uh, save some money, but also get more involved making your own slices from a primal. So we can go from this to that. It's pretty cool and pretty exciting. And again, we'll showcase on the screen kind of where um, the primal ribeye comes from um, here and on the screen, kind of show that on the cow and then also how we uh, got it to this point. So again, I'm not a butcher, but this is some basics that you can begin to think about how you can take a rib roast essentially and turn it into individualized steaks. So now we're gonna vacuum seal and then we'll have some final comments. We just finished up vacuum sealing all those ribeye steaks and those beef tips, put them in the freezer for another steak night and I cannot wait. Well, I wanna share two benefits. We kind of talked about it throughout the video, but in summary, cost savings and also personal cuts. Those are the two main benefits I see. You're able to find a really good deal on a ribeye primal or a kind of New York strip um, primal, then you're able to save a lot of money. If you go to Walmart, you're gonna spend maybe 15 to 18, maybe $20 per ribeye steak, and maybe even more, especially if it's prime, a lot higher, maybe even $25. Uh, and typically on average on that website, uh, I found it was like 17 or 18 on average per pound. So if you get a thicker steak, it's gonna be more expensive. So you, you do the math, you're able to probably save 50 to $75 most likely, depending on what kind of deal you find online or at your local grocer or butcher. And if you go to a butcher, you're definitely gonna spend a lot more money on individual cuts um, on, prime, uh, on a prime steak. So that's just something to consider. Uh, I'll have a link for Rostelli's I don't partner with them particularly, so just check them out as one option. You can also find a few other places online to consider. And then again, you got personal cuts. You're able to individualize how thin or thick you want to make it. And then lastly, it just gets you more involved as a backyard cook and pit master. It really continues to increase your experience and, and your skill set on getting more involved in uh, cutting meat and making becoming essentially your own butcher and getting more involved and learning things along the way. And I learned a lot of things on this uh, cook doing my very first primal slices. So sharing this journey with you as I had it here, I just thought I would share what we had the opportunity to do to cost save and also do some personal cuts. So friends, if you found value in this video, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and it really helps the channel. We're building a community here at Bartlow's Barbecue, and I hope you enjoyed it. Put in the comments what you thought, what has been your experience. Put it there, let us learn from each other. If you found really good deals in certain places, uh, our community definitely wants to learn from you as well. So till next time, we'll see you soon. From my backyard to yours, less hate, more love, good barbecue.